I am often asked, is it too late? And I must say that many of my colleagues who I respect, I mean, eminent scientists like Sir Martin Rees and uh, the eco-philosopher Clive Hamilton, uh, Guy McPherson, are saying uh, we've reached a critical point where we've passed too many tipping points and we can't go back. My answer to that is no one can say it's too late. Say it's urgent, and it is urgent. We have a crisis looming of enormous proportions, but we don't know enough to say it's too late. And I use uh, an, an example, a real life example. The most prized species of salmon in the world is a sockeye salmon, bright red flesh. And the biggest sockeye run in the world is in the Fraser River in British Columbia. We like to get 20 to 30 million sockeye coming back in a season. And in 2009, just over one million sockeye returned to the Fraser. And I remember vividly turning to my wife and saying, that's it. There isn't the biomass to get up to the spawning beds for the sockeye, they're, they're extinct. One year later in 2010, we got the biggest sockeye run in 100 years. Now I say that not showing how stupid I am. Nobody knows what happened. Nature shocked us. And I believe we don't know enough to, to know what other secrets might be there. If we can pull back and give nature room and a chance, I believe she will be far more generous than we deserve. But it's very, very urgent. I was in the belly of the beast in the United States uh, the week leading up to the election on November 8th, and I was in Boston with friends on election night. And I must say it was a stunning, stunning uh, result. I think people, certainly I am shocked because what we try to do is to present our ideas, our discussion about what is climate change, what is causing climate change, using the best possible scientific evidence that we have available. And you hope that you can have a rational conversation and a debate and discussion, but based on, on facts, on what we know. And of course, there are still lots that we don't know, but to the best of our knowledge, we argue uh, about the situation. And don't think this is just about in the United States. We now have a leadership run for the, uh, for the Conservative Party in Canada, and Kelly Leach is pushing a Trumpian kind of agenda about screening people, on, uh, immigrants, on the basis of whether they have the right values for Canada. But Michael Chong, one of the candidates, said we need a carbon tax to deal with climate change, and he was booed. Not only that, but another candidate, I don't know who it was, said climate change isn't an important issue, and he was cheered by that audience. So we have to wonder, it's not just that the Americans have gone nuts, we've got issues right here in Canada. The vast majority of Canadians understand climate change and accept that it's real and we must act on it. And obviously we're going to deal with it seriously because Canada is one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change. We're a northern country. Inuit have been telling us for 40 years something's happening to weather and climate. They know that's, that it's getting warmer. And we have the longest marine coastline of any country in the world. What happens just from the warming of the oceans? Water expands when it gets warmer. And as the great ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica fall into the oceans, you're going to see rises, not in inches or, or, or centimeters, we're going to see rises of meters in a very short time. Catastrophic for a country like Canada. And then you think of our, our climate-related uh, industries, agriculture, forestry, fisheries, tourism, winter sports. I mean, all of these now are at tremendous risk from climate change. Canadians understand there is a great deal at stake in the coming years if we don't deal with this issue and do something about uh, reducing our emissions. Young people today ask me, what is the most important issue? Is it climate change? Is it ocean degradation? Is it deforestation? Is it toxic pollution? Is it species extinction? I mean, there are a lot of very, very serious ecological issues on, on the line. And I say, look, I don't know which one. Right now, climate is looming as a huge issue. But any one of these could ultimately be the, the issue that will do us in. They're all important and serious. But underlying each of these issues, 
what is causing us to uh, carry on in such a destructive way is what exists in our brains. It's the way we see the world. Our brain is formed by our experiences, the way we grow up, our gender, our ethnic, uh, our ethnic uh, basis, our religion, our socioeconomic class. All of these things shape the way we literally see the world. And when that happens, the input comes in from our senses. The brain actively edits the information so it fits into what we already believe. So getting people to change the way they act through is very difficult if it clashes with what they believe. Let me give you some examples. I went to a village on uh, the side of a mountain in the Andes in Peru, and I learned there that the children are taught this mountain is an apu. Apu means God. And as long as that mountain casts its shadow on that village, it will determine the fate of everyone in that village. Now imagine how those children, when they grow up, will treat that mountain. Compared to a kid in Trail, British Columbia, who's taught all their lives, that mountain is full of gold and silver. You see, the way we see the world shapes and determines the way we act towards it. So is a forest a sacred grove, or is it just an opportunity for timber and pulp? And when something is sacred, you simply don't treat it the way you do if you simply regard it as an opportunity or a resource. And so I think that we radically have to shift the way that we see that world because that will, will shape the way we behave towards it. And right now, we are behaving in a way that has no respect for the sacredness of the earth. We don't regard the earth as literally our mother. Children today, I find, are very, very aware of the environmental problems. I don't think they're as aware of how critical the issues are, but it's their entire future that's at stake. And the problem we face today is when someone is elected to office, the first priority for every politician who's elected is to get re-elected, which means whatever you do, you got to be able to boast about it in the next three or four years. And that gives you a very short time frame then. You, no one's going to go to, to the public and say, uh, I'm going to spend a lot of your tax dollars now because maybe in 30 or 40 years it's going to pay off. We don't know, but we've got to spend the money now. They won't get reelected, or let alone, well, I've got to worry about future generations who don't exist. Children aren't on the political agenda, not because politicians are evil or stupid, but the political reality is you've got to worry about who's voting in the next election. And so I tell children, your entire future is at stake now. People have to make some big decisions, and you're not on the agenda of those people who can make those big decisions. So mom and dad are the two most important people in your life. Mom and dad love you. When you say to mom and dad, I'm worried about what the future is, holds for me, mom and dad have to become eco-warriors on your behalf. They're the ones that have to speak out. But there's another group as well, and that's grandma and grandpa. That is the older people around. They don't have to worry about getting fired from their jobs. They don't have to worry about getting a promotion or a raise. They're past that time. They're free now to speak the truth from their hearts. So I urge young people, get the old people to come and tell you what they know tell you what their experiences have been, and get them to join you. I mean, they can get on the line and get arrested. They got nothing to lose. So they're the people, I think, that you look to for young people to join. And with the urgency and the muscle and the activism of young people and the wisdom and the experience of older people, you've got a very powerful combination.